First off, I want to give all praises and glory to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit. In Hebrew, it's Kol Hala Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rahach Kodash. Double honors and to the elders and apostles of GMS who taught me this truth. Salutations to all the brothers out there that's teaching this word in truth and sincerity and peace. Blessings and healings on to the elect because that's why we do these videos. And uh, today, man, I want to talk about this. It says, Israel hit with two earthquakes in 10 hours, four in one month. You know, and if these was the real people of the Lord, you know, if you have us and Mashiach actually put them in that land, the prophecy says that they would dwell safely. There wouldn't be no war. There wouldn't be no more crying or sorrow. You know, but when earthquakes hit, people are scared to death, right? Okay, so let's read this. It says, Two earthquakes shook northern Israel within a few hours, bringing the total of earthquakes in Israel this month up to four. Scientists are assuming dire warnings of imminent doom. You know, going down, the first earthquake hit around 9 p.m. on Tuesday night and measured 3.5 on the Richter scale. TS Epicenter was located in Jordan, nine miles northeast of Ben Xi'an. On Wednesday morning, about 10 hours later, a 3.1 earthquake shook the same area. Okay, it says just two weeks ago, two earthquakes measuring 3.6, 3.8 hit within 24 hours of each other with epicenters just south of the Canaric. So four earthquakes, according to Jordania State News Agency, Petra, as many as 10 aftershocks were felt in Jordan. However, no damage was reported. Okay, but that's not the point I want to get. You know what I'm saying? Basically, you know. If these were the real people, of, uh, real people of the Lord, this wouldn't be happening, man. You know, but it talks about who's in that land today in the scriptures. And we know through history who's in that land too, man. You know, Esau, Edom. Okay, but let's read a couple of scriptures real quick. You know, before I start going in. Let's start from here. This is Revelation 21 verse 4. This is talking about in the kingdom, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Okay, so if they were the real people of the land, I know people were screaming and in fear and in sorrow when this was happening. Okay, this is Isaiah chapter 14, verse 3, and it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall, shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear. And from the hard bondage wherein that was made to serve. Okay. That's not happening over there, man. You know, but it, this is happening. This is Isaiah 48 and 22. There is no peace, say, if you have by Shemeshah unto the wicked. There's no peace unto the wicked, man. You know, that's why you have by Shemeshah is doing that. You know, and let's get some scriptures who the wicked is. You know, let's start off with that before I get into the scriptures on who's in that land. Let's go straight to Genesis chapter 27, verse um, 38. You know, it says, um, And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing on my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword thou shalt live, you know, why is that? He said, basically, Isaac blessed Esau with the world, man. You go to Job chapter 9, verse 24. It says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, wherein who is he? Because the wicked are in rulership. Esau, Edom rules by the sword, man. And what does it say about that? Well, let me keep reading. It says, um, and by thy sword thou shalt live, and thou shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion. They got the dominion of the earth right now. Thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then would I slay my brother Jacob. You know, why does the white, why, why does the white man hate the black man, the Latino man, and the Native American man so much? This is it, man, because that's in a spirit to do so. But it says... And by thy sword thou shalt live. You know, let's get a scripture where it talks about, you know, who the wicked is. You know, 
let's go to Psalms 17. You know, let me look around. And um, 13, arise, O Yahweh, and shall disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Okay, so, you know, these people was given the sword. They rule by the sword. Okay, the wicked rule by the sword. So the wicked is in that land today. Esau Edom is in Israel today. You know what I'm saying? So let's get a couple of more scriptures to prove that. You know, um, let's see. Let me read this again. There is no peace safe you have us in Mishan to the wicked. That's why there's earthquakes over there. That's why there's terror attacks over there. That's why even on their websites, they got, you know, this. They got pestilences over there. And they got this, a terror watch. You know, when the real Israelites get in that land, they're not going to worry about no terror watch. You know what I'm saying? You know, because Yahweh Shai is going to be there. King David's going to be there. On down the 144,000, you know, the one third down to the two third, man. Nobody's gonna be able to F with Israel when they really get back in rulership. So, not gonna worry about no terror watch. There ain't gonna be no more war, you know what I'm saying? And let me get that scripture real quick before I even start. Let's see, no more war, man. This is a uh, Micah 4 and 3. This is talking about in the kingdom, talking about when you have a actually puts his people back in Israel, man. Because that's a prophecy. And it shall and he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruna hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. There ain't gonna be no more war once the real Israelites get back in that land. You know, and let me get a quick scripture real quick, you know, Baruch chapter two. You know, you go down, you know, and it says, And return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the ways of their fathers which sinned before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. So the person who is going to bring back Israel into that land is Yahweh, who people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. It's not going to be by your own doing. And that's how they did it. World War II, the Belfort Declaration. You know what I'm saying? It's, let me just type in, I will bring you back home, basically. Let's see. Does say, Yahweh Shemesha, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries whither you have been scattered. And I will give you the land of Israel. This is talking about, basically, you know, Christians call it the rapture. You know, when we get called up, you know, we're going to be in the sky where you have a shot. He's going to give us new bodies, new mind. Okay. New second covenant. And then he's going to set up the kingdom on earth. And the capital is going to be Israel, man. Okay. That's where the Garden of Eden was. That's where Mount Chesedek ruled. You know, that's yeah, how much of shot's favorite, you know, landmass on the earth. That's why he picked that spot. So. Yahweh is going to bring back Israel into that land himself. You know, not by war, not by lying, deceit. Okay, like they did it. Okay, so let's get some scriptures. Let's go straight to, um, let's see where I want to go. Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel first. Ezekiel 36 and 5. And uh, let me read up a little bit. I'm going to just read from the top. It says, Also, son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of Yehovah Shemeshah. Thus say Yehovah Shemeshah, because the enemy have said against you, Aha! The enemy has said against you, Aha! Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. The enemy have said against you, Aha! Because they did it with all joy, man. Therefore prophesy and say this, say Yahweh Shemeshah, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side. So the real Israelites got devoured by the heathen, that you might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, okay, because the blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans all got wrecked, man. And ye have 
and you are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy among the people. Everybody hates blacks, man. Latinos and Native Americans, basically. Okay. You saw even the so-called white man gave us a bad image, man, all over the world. Sending movies off over here and over there. That's why the whole world comes down upon those people, man, by their doing. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of Yahweh Shemeshah, that say Yahweh Shemeshah to the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, and to the desolate waste, and to the cities that are forsaken, which become a prey, and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Thus say Yahweh Shemeshah, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen, and against all Idumia, who's Idumia, man. Idumia, Edom, equals red, Edom, Edomite, descendants of Esau. Okay, so because of the residue of the heathen, okay, and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land and then into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out as a prey. How did they get the land of Israel? You know, these people, like I said, World War II. Okay, the Belfort Declaration also, man. They wrote that around 1918, I think, and then they acted upon it in 1948 after World War II. Okay, point blank period, man. You know what I'm saying? And um, let me get this scripture too. This is Malachi chapter 1, verse 4 says, Where is Edom say if we are impoverished? But we will return and build the desolate places. This is what they have done. They return to places that's not theirs and build it up. Thus say Yahabashim and Shaphos, they shall build. What's their saying right now? Build back better. Okay, but I will throw down. You shall build back better, and Yahabashim and Shah will throw it down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. The border of wickedness. Okay. Esau Edom is the wicked. And the people against whom Yahabashim and Shah have indignation forever. Okay, and also I wanted to read this. Also, I wanted to go down because it says you shall build, but I will throw down. It says geological experts have recently warned that approximately one million homes in Israel are at risk of collapse in case of an earthquake. One million homes. OK, because Esau is in that land. Going to fold, man. They shall build, but I will destroy. According to the estimates, a major earthquake could cause about 7000 deaths and 100 and 45,000 injuries with 170,000 people left homeless and 320,000 buildings damaged. You know what I'm saying? Yahweh Shemesha is not playing with these people. Israel is his favorite part of the land. They have the biggest gay parades in Tel Aviv. Okay. They just disrespect Yahweh Shemesha in every way over there. They took down Yahweh Shemesha's people, scattered his people all over the world. Okay. Because... You know, these so-called Jews are the ones that, um, you know, supplied the boats for um, the transatlantic slave trade. One of the boats was called Jesus, Judah, and all that, man. You know, these people are wicked, man. So, you know, let me get another scripture real quick. I'm just going to keep it rolling. This is uh, Joel chapter um, 3, verse 2. It says, um... And I will gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So they parted the land because Palestine, Israel conflict. There's a Palestine and Israel conflict. Two people in Israel. Okay, they parted the land. They both live there. This is prophecy about the end days, man. You know what I'm saying? And then it goes down into World War Three in Joel because of what they did to us. You know? So, it says, Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. For the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. So, how about Shemeshah is not playing with these people, man? You know? That's why he's going to turn up. Let's get another scripture, Isaiah 26, 
Isaiah 26 and um, 10. Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness in the land of uprightness? They haven't learned righteousness in Israel, man. Will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of Yahweh Shemeshah? No, they will not. Because, like I said, they got the biggest gay parades in Tel Aviv. They got feminism in Tel Aviv and Israel and all this and all that. You know, 